you've, you've, you've listened to the governor speak at length. I mean, that's been about eight minutes of talk about where the state is going to, where it's coming from, the issues at hand, and the decisions he's made. Notably, this is the first time since that deal was signed that the governor is coming to address it publicly. Would you say it's been judiciously oh, I handled? Say, I would say I'm actually disappointed in him. Uh, it appears that the River State people themselves are much more self-aware than their governor. And that, that sends a bad image, it, sends, it paints a bad picture. You have uh, an eight-point agenda that contains a lot of unconstitutional decrees by the president himself. And there is that uh, a belief, and actually I've also been in uh, uh, receipt of certain underground agreements that were also made, but were not palatable enough you know, to be put with the eight-point agenda. You expect that somebody who is the governor of River State should be bold should be courageous, should be able to lead the reverse people in the right path. But what we have seen now is that he's not that kind of a person. He's somebody that uh, can be moved as the wind blows. He's somebody that can be controlled by outsiders, by people who do not really have the interest of River State at hand. And it's very, very, very worrying. We shouldn't be uh, having uh, such characters leading River State. Now, first off, he said two things. Um, a step has been taken by both parties. Um, the impeachment has been withdrawn and allowances have been released to the members of the House of Assembly. I believe that that's in the direction of the 27 members of the Assembly who um, cross capitated from the PDP to the APC. So what then now would be this, their status? If the Constitution says that by virtue of their actions, they no longer have a seat in the House of Assembly, what then is the status? On what premise are they receiving allowances now? Now, that's a big question uh, in, in my head. On what premise are they receiving allowances right now? Uh, that's, that's, that, that's the problem. That's the problem with when you jettison the Constitution. Because as it stands now, they've basically treated the Constitution like a, a, what would it say, a recommendation. They have not treated it as something that is sacrosanct that you must abide by, that right. you must be guided by. Uh, for example, he presented the budget to the House of Assembly Speaker, he recognized that is uh, Honorable Edison. 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 But if you go through that, uh, the eight-point agenda, it was said that he has to represent it. He has to accept these people. He has to accept that Amai Wuli is the Speaker. So on what premise? On what, what, on what legal or what legality is this thing hinged on? It's hinged on nothing. It's simply hinged on the whims and caprices of a full, of a select group of individuals who feel that they are above the law. And there is somebody that used to say something say that legality is the construct of the powerful you see and this has proven it uh, very 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 well i think like i said it's unfortunate it's unfortunate and it's important that uh, uh, lawyers uh, uh, take this up and try to get clarity because if we don't we have created a very very bad precedent that other people can build on mm. and before you know we build we are, we are in a society that is no longer governed by laws and people just do whatever it is that they want because they feel that, okay, I'm powerful enough and I'm going to get away with it. Well, there are two things here that stick out. First off, we are aware that there are a few groups who have gone to court. The PDP, in their only statement, by the way, have said the INEC, as a matter of fact, should announce a date for a rerun election to fill the 27 vacant seats, in quote. Now, we are also aware that a few groups have gone to court. Um, uh, is, is some legal persons in River State, CAJ, Chimo, and uh, his partner have gone to court stopping the governor from implementing, to try to stop the governor from implementing what is in this agreement, as well as ensuring as well that those who, the 27 lawmakers who defected, are not allowed to come back. And so it's it's like a double-edged sword. They're fighting on both sides with the, that law, law uh, suit. But the question here is, in this situation where it appears the president has the final say, do you believe that those cases filed will see the light of day as, especially with regard to what um, the generality of the populace thinks about this current situation? Personally, I don't, I don't believe in the Nigerian judiciary. Personally, I don't. I think that we are at the stage in this country where we have a complete state capture by the elites. 
mm. and it's the elites of this country that decides what comes out of the courts. You can go there with your whatever it is, and you know, the, what you're going to come out with is something that is entirely different. I, I do not believe at this point in time it's obvious that uh, the agreement and what's on ground actually favors the president. It favors him and it favors his political party and it favors his political associates. So I do not see any any reason for anyone. Maybe we have we still have optimistic people who believe that okay, yes, they believe in the judiciary, but don't I don't see anything coming out of it, unfortunately. Now there are a few constitutional issues in this whole arrangement, this whole new arrangement. You have made um note of the fact that the new arrangement quite clearly favors the president and his political party. I don't know where that premise is coming from, <laughs> though because um uh, to the best of our knowledge, first off, the FCT minister is still a member of the People's Democratic Party. You know, um, it's only 27 members of the state assembly who have cross carpeted from the PDP to the APC. So, how then do you come about? How do you think that this arrangement now favors the president and his political party? Well, it's actually very, very, very obvious. We, if, you, if you trace it back to how the elections panned out in River State and the controversies that came after that. He realized that the governor himself, after even saying that he is not working for the APC, ended up working for the APC, and the APC emerged victorious in River State by hook or crook. Uh, it's the same governor who claimed, okay, I'm in the PDP. He's now a minister under the APC. The same governor who has come out on different forums to claim that he bought the, uh, uh, the nomination forms for everybody. All, everybody from the uh, National Assembly to the governor to the State House of Assembly. You have 27 of those members who have now decamped to the APC. And at no point in time has he come out to say, okay, I am the leader of the PDP in River State or whatever. I'm the political leader in River State or whatever. These people, this move they are made is wrong. You have seen him parley with these people. You have seen these people. He, he has basically been like the background force behind these people. So I, I, except we just want to uh, deceive ourselves. We want to just uh, go. But it's obvious. It's obvious that he's with the APC. I think it's just a matter of time before he moves. So if per adventure... You have the minister of the FCC, who is just the past uh, governor, governor of River State, uh, being a, a supporter of the APC, a supporter of the president, which he has continued to swear allegiance to. You have 27 members of the uh, House of Assembly, who uh, we don't even know if they are in the House of Assembly or who, if they are not Assembly members, who are not loyal to the APC. And the governor who has sworn to abide, not by the constitution, but by the decrees of the president, who is an APC member. It's simple. It's straightforward. The river state has been completely captured. So it works in the interest of the president that all these people are beholden to him. The for former governor is beholden to him. The uh, majority of the House of Assembly members are beholden to him. The National Assembly is beholden to him. Now the governor is beholden to him. So who exactly uh, are these people working for? Not reverse people.